Hi guys, Nick here from Intuitive Tennis. Today I want to teach you the most important aspects of a one-handed backhand slice. So let's start off with the grip. The grip is going to be a continental grip, uh, base knuckle at bevel number two. There have been some players in the past that used a, a eastern forehand grip on the slice uh, with the third bevel on the base knuckle, but I do not recommend this grip because uh, this grip opens the racket face way too much at contact and a lot of the slices end up going high and short in the court. So my recommendation is a continental grip for the backhand slice. If you watch my one-handed backhand video, we talked about having the fingers uh, closer together on the flat one-handed backhand or the topspin one-handed backhand. And the reason for that was uh, that there's less stability in the hand in an eastern backhand grip uh, because the fingers are in front and the hand is on top of the racket and we're going to have to hold it a little bit tighter. However, on the slice backhand, we are in a continental grip and the fingers are going to be the same as any other shot with slight spreading between the index finger and the middle finger and the reason for this is that this is a softer contact and we also want the wrist to be very flexible uh, if we need to hit a low ball on the back end so you have to hold the racket with a slight spreading of the index finger and the middle finger on the slice back end. So the setup on the slice backhand is going to be identical to the setup on the one-handed backhand. We're going to make a large lateral step, uh, but that gives us an automatic shoulder turn uh, where our back is pointing to the other side. It gives us great stability. It also gives us the option to hit further across. It gives us a bigger range of motion in the front of the shot uh, as opposed to going uh, open into the shot like this. And so when you get a slice backhand, you simply are going to turn and make a large lateral step to the side like this. The arm structure on the take back is going to be bent on the slice. There are some players that have a straight arm when they take the racket up and it can work. I find it easier, however, uh, to have a slightly bent arm is more comfortable and have the racket at least above uh, the shoulder, something like this. And then as we drop the racket, the arm will straighten and you do need a straight arm uh, for the remainder of the shot. But you can start off in a bent position like this and then straighten upon the racket drop. So let's talk about the contact on the backhand slice. There's going to be uh, some strokes and tennis that are hit with underspin that require an open racket face, such as a backhand volley or a chip return where we don't really swing at the ball. We basically block the ball uh, with an open racket face. And that ball indeed will have underspin as it travels to the other side. However, on the backhand slice, uh, the racket face is going to be more closed. Uh, and the main reason for this is that the contact is more closer to the body. Not in a lateral sense. In a lateral sense, we can have it uh, something like this, a little bit further away. But when it comes to the forward-backward spacing, uh, this stroke is going to be hit rather uh, close to the body. And the reason why is if we hit it too far away, uh, that's going to open our racket face and make it more unstable. You see, if I try to close the racket face here, it straightens my wrist, and it's a much more weaker position for the wrist. So now we have the contact a little bit closer to our body on the slice and the next step is uh, we're going to hit a cross. You have to hit a cross on the back end slice for three different reasons, uh, for feel, for control and for power. And so the feel comes from holding the ball longer on the racket compared to uh, uh, slicing the ball forward like this. That ball is going to come off the strings too fast and you're going to lose feel that way. So we hit a cross for feel. We also hit a cross from control. The control in tennis comes from uh, keeping the racket face positioned uh, parallel to the net as long as possible. So if we slice uh, like this, uh, we lose control pretty fast. So we have to keep the racket face you know, parallel to the net as long as possible. And thirdly, we get a lot more power on the slice when we use the power the same way we do on the one-handed backhand, uh, more from the back muscles like this. As we hit a cross, we contract the back muscles and we get acceleration on the ball this way. So let's talk about how the slice or the underspin is created. The slice or the underspin is created by swinging high to low. And because we have more of a closed racket face at contact, we get the slice for simply uh, going from a high position uh, to a low position and then across, and that makes the ball uh, rotate this way. 
if you hit through the ball forward like this you will be able to get slice as well because you're hitting high to low but you will lose power you will lose feel you will lose control and most likely your slices are going to have a tendency to sit up in the court so can you as a recreational player hit across on the slice? You absolutely can. Uh, if you uh, maintain a disposition of the racket face uh, after contact and uh, where the racket angle uh, doesn't change, in other words, uh, you're not going like this, you're just keeping the strings parallel to the net and you go across, uh, you will find immediate improvement in field control and power. You will see that the ball is gonna go much straighter and you're gonna uh, have the ball go lower as well and it's gonna also have more underspin. Uh, this way, while you might get some uh, under, underspin on the ball, uh, you decrease uh, the pace of the ball dramatically and your ball have a tendency to go a little bit shorter. However, you have to remember that the slice backhand is an advanced shot. And so a beginner or even some intermediate players uh, will not be able to learn to slice right away. They have to master all the other shots first. They have to learn how to hit topspin, they have to learn how to hit flat, and the slice comes later on uh, to their game. Uh, as you can see, some juniors, uh, under 12s or under 14s, uh, they have very weak slices, and this is very understandable because they're still developing their game, and a slice is something that takes time, uh, but it always comes after you master the fundamental strokes of the game, which are uh, your top spin or flat ground strokes. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like button, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.